So Friday night, this week we're going through the fuel system. Car moves, transmission shifts good. Everything looks pretty good there. So now we're making our changes to the fuel system that we were hoping to start last week. Didn't happen. But we all know how that went. So as of right now, we got my boy Matt working up here, getting them hoses and fuel filter and stuff out. We got a new fitting to go on the fuel rail. We got a new fuel filter to support 3 8 uh, inlet and outlet. We're doing it all, baby. And we got a pressure sensor that'll go up there as well. And we're going to be wiring it into the reference voltage and reference ground for the throttle position sensor just to make things simple. So we'll just run a couple wires from there and then only one wire needs to go from the sensor to the mega squirt in the car. And uh, that'll be probably the last thing we try to tackle. And uh, we got the fuel cell out back here. This is our little fuel cell. And uh, so cute. it was in the vehicle like this with the inlet or the in pickup coming from the passenger side there. So we're going to be installing it like this so that no even if we get low on fuel, slosh won't be an issue. And uh, we just got to find a way, creative way to do that. And then uh, we're going to run all PTFE 3 8 or 6 AN hoses from here all the way up. It's pretty much going to be an all a and fitting system so it'll be really easy to service and everything should work really good and flow really good and uh that's the plan for tonight so we got to get to it pretty much got all the hose out all the old hose the fuel filter and now what we got is our a and fittings that we're going to be running these are going to come off the cell these and these are for the pump these and these are for the rail we got a we matched up a fuel filter that had three eighths fittings at the shop and have like some quick connect uh beautiful quick connect chingaderas for that so Dude, we'll to, look at this hose and we got our look beautiful at that PTFE. beautiful ptfe hose is really hard it's really like firm and it's probably going to be a huge bitch to work with it's even just like sliding one of those barbs into that hose is really difficult real tough but, but the nice thing is, is that once we get it run, since this is E85 approved, hopefully we'll only have to do it once. Yeah, once it's done, I don't think I don't think this engine is going to outrun a 3/8 system, you know, as long as we have the right pump in it. Yeah. And that's still to be determined, but we have our We're going to find out with our nifty fuel pressure sensor that we're going to install as well. Sensor is going to talk to the mega squirt, all our data logs are going to have that information available as well. So, one thing we are a little unsure about is whether or not we need to utilize a fuel dampener. Um, norm if this was a sequential multi-port system, I would be like, nah, we don't need that crap. But it is batch fire, so all the injectors hit at once. So it's going to be have a little bit more tendency to, to pulse or have a pulsation in all the right. pressure. But that should be something that's reflected by our sensors. So we're going to go ahead and send it with send it. without it and just see if we have anything funny on our data logs at that point. But aside from that, all we got to do is I got some aluminum to fab up these little strips over here that we're going to weld up to... Uh, mount up our fuel cell and it's going to be mounted better than ever it's always been mounted kind of janky with like the original fuel cell fuel tank straps and then like balls of foam that hold us still also it'll line up with our access hole here so it's we're gonna nice as it never really has before yeah so we're gonna actually be able to line up the fill spot with that hole properly and have it all kind of up tucked a little better and then it'll only take one person to fill up the tank <laughs> yeah for real cool so it's uh we're just moving right along here All right, fabbing up some straps to hold our fuel cell. Matt's working on that. And I've got the fuel cell perfectly positioned right now. As you can see, you can actually get to the filler hole pretty easily from there. I just got it up on jack stands right now. It's dirty as hell, it looks like shit. Probably could have wiped it down, but it's just up on jacks right now. We just took measurements. I got riv nut here, riv nut there. And I made the decision to actually install the rivet nuts from the top so we didn't have little nubs sticking up in the hatch. And I think that'll be okay. The strap's just gonna bottom out on the end of that on the end of that stub instead of sitting flush, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. And it keeps everything on the top nice and smooth. On the front, we're gonna be using the same bolt that the fuel pump mount, little mount uh, hold down does. And then on the other side, there's another threaded hole that just happened to be there that we're going to use over there. So we're going to fab up some brackets real quick. We got measurements on how long this, the four straps need to be. We're going to get these ears that Matt's working on right now and weld them to the longer straps so that we can use through bolts for them. And then we're going to take them up. 
Matt's going to learn how to weld aluminum tonight. Hey. So we got Matt working on TIGging up our fuel tank straps. Never welded in his life, barely. A little bit with a MIG welder. And I'm teaching him on AC aluminum. It's a long time for a spot weld, buddy. Sound like he might have dipped it. Yeah, he didn't get enough heat. He didn't get okay. enough heat. You need to just mash the pedal until you see a puddle. And then back off a little bit. I just mash this thing that's off, right? All right, it's been a long night, but we got the fuel system all plumbed up. We got the hose ran. We made these nifty little brackets out of aluminum, all TIG welded to support the cell. Got everything from the tank up. We got a 90 degree back here. And then the return is now up on the top. You can see that little looped hose. We got our... Uh, Adapter to 6AN fitting off the rail. It goes behind the valve cover to our fuel pressure sensor, which I still have to wire up to our new fuel filter. I got some quick connects on it, and it just goes down and follows the same route as the original fuel hoses. Now let's climb this bitch up and make sure it don't leak. All right, so it's the next day, and I just wanted to try to get this fuel system all finished up. So it's just me tonight, I still at my house. And we had some leak coming from the fuel pressure sensor there. I just redid, kind of trimmed up the hoses, redid the clamps and put some thread sealer on the sensor. I'm hoping that that problem is resolved. So we'll see, as long as that's good, I'm gonna go ahead and get the pressure sensor wired up and uh, get the mega square reading it properly. And uh, then we will know what our pressure is doing. That's pretty exciting. So adding a sensor to the mega squirt uh, or adding an input um, can be kind of tricky. Some things are harder than others. Um, things like crank sensor, cam sensor, that kind of stuff does require um, actually making changes to the circuit board itself, actually opening up the mega squirt um, and making those changes physically on the board. Other things like um, miscellaneous inputs and outputs that are controlled on the MS3X board don't require opening up the board. In fact, all you got to do is just use one of the existing pins on the DB42 or whatever the connector is for the MS3X. So the way we're going to be doing this today, the fuel pressure sensor is a five volt sensor. It has a reference voltage, which is five volts coming from the ECM. It has a reference ground coming from the ECM, and then it has the signal wire from the ECM. On our setup, the only thing that uses a five volt reference at all is the throttle position sensor. So we're gonna just piggyback off of that five volt reference. We're also gonna splice into the same ground that runs to the TPS. And the only like independent wire that we're gonna run is gonna be the signal wire. But for right now, I'm going to splice into the low reference, the high reference, and run a wire to the MS3X for our signal wire. And, uh, and then we'll see if we can get this thing set up. So I got all my wires ran now. But for now, it's just going into the can. I want to have zero PSI on it while I calibrate it. And so now you're just going to kind of walk along with me. I have no idea really how to do this. I'm going to go into generic sensor inputs right here. Okay, right, so we're going to go in here. Spare ADC is the one that we're messing with. So spare ADC is what the pin is called that I wired into the MS3X board. Field name, we're gonna call it fuel pressure transformation. All right, okay, so we'll go linear. It looks like uh, basically just has us put in two bits of data. All right, so in my advanced engines, generic sensor inputs, pulls up my table. So it is a linear sensor. Um, I got the source specified, the spare ADC, but it's zero value and five volt value. Basically just the extremes from nothing to everything that the sensor is capable of. Um, and those specs are available where I got the sensor. Um, zero PSI should be about 0.5 volts and five volts should be about 100 PSI but it's not asking about 0.5 volts. So I kind of got to memorize here. So I, I put in this info here. Um, lag factor just means there's not going to be any smoothing, which means 
computer is just going to show exactly what it sees but you see the fuel pressure gauge right here is showing 14 so at zero volts we really want this to say negative 14 i think and that should kind of cancel that out so we'll burn that Let's see what our fuel pressure is at now and it's at 2.3 i could probably get a little closer if i'm a little more precise with this this needs to be negative 15 so we can kind of we can kind of tweak it until we know it's right on the money it's oh uh, yeah now we're getting there but that seems to be what we want so now i'm going to hook my fuel line back up so that i can put that line under pressure cross my fingers it doesn't freaking leak this time and we'll put it under pressure i think we have the regulator set to about 45 psi so we should see pretty close to 45 psi on our gauge here let's give it a shot all right, so now that that fuel line's plugged in, it's at like one PSI. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the key a couple times. Just till I hear the pump really prime up. And build some pressure. And boom. You can see we have pressure, but you can see it dropping. All right. Start it up, see what our pressure does. Oh. Everything else looks good. The sensor is working like it should. The mega squirts interpreting the data and and um, displaying it in, in increments or in a, in a unit that we can understand. So we'll be able to use that to know if our fuel system is struggling to keep up when under large boost conditions. Still want to take it for a test drive and, uh, and see what it does when it actually goes into some boost. So that is going to do it for this week's video. We got the fuel system pretty much squared away. Everything else looks good. The sensor is working like it should. The mega squirts interpreting the data. So we'll be able to use that to know if our fuel system is struggling to keep up when under large boost conditions. Still want to take it for a test drive and, uh, and see what it does when it actually goes into some boost but that'll be for another day. So last thing I want to finish with here is we did get a new part in that I'm kind of stoked about. So today my Chinese eBay headers showed up. These are pretty sick. Actually, is a pretty nice looking piece. That's uh, all stainless steel. Of course, that's Chinese stainless steel, which is probably just mild steel or worse, who knows? But it looks pretty good. And this is not for the L motor. This is the header that we're gonna be running on the 2JZ. And I've got an adapter so we can run a T3 turbo on it for the time being. Um, hopefully we get something in the works pretty soon to get a, a T4 housing on it but as of right now when we do make the switch to the 2j we're going to be running the same force performance turbo we have now which is going to supply us more than enough boost for for our initial goals so that should be pretty dope so we're going to get this stuck on the engine uh, when i get back to work next week and i got a uh, just a cheapo turbo that i'm going to stick on it just for the time being just to, so i can see what it looks like see how everything's going to fit and line up but uh yeah that's going to do it for this week He's still at the house for now. I think next week we're going to be uh, working on some. Uh, I think next week we're going to be working on some front suspension stuff.